As engine performance increases, valve life decreases. That's true in race engines, and it's equally true in today's power equipment engines. Today's engines work harder, and they're changing rapidly. Reduced lead content in fuels results in higher temperatures, which often leads to harder seats and valves. New technology means new designs, new valve train geometries, and new maintenance procedures. Innovative engine designs mean more aluminum and lightweight alloys. New applications are found each day for a broader range of engines. It all adds up to new opportunities for the small engine technician because some things haven't changed. As you know, constant wide open throttle operation, neglect, and downright abuse will all lead to increased engine repair. As a result, there's a growing need for valve and valve seat reconditioning services in today's market. And it's good, profitable business. If you take the time to do it right, it's also business that generates a lot of happy, satisfied customers. The best part is that doing it right doesn't require a lot of effort and investment. All you need is a basic understanding of how valves work and the right equipment, including both valve seat cutters and a valve refacer from New Way. By the time you finish watching this tape, you'll have a good basic understanding of the how and why of proper valve seating. Then you'll be ready to get your share of this growing market. The first step, of course, is to remove the head. We don't need to tell you how to do that. It's important to take a minute to look over the engine, especially the valve train. Check for obvious problems. Of course, you're going to check the stems for mushrooming and carefully use a file to clean up any that you find. If you can't pull a valve out with your fingers, the stem needs some attention. Substituting force for finesse here just makes things more complicated later on. Take a look at those valves as you take them out. They can tell you a lot about what's going on in an engine. A buildup of combustion deposits, like these, on the valve face is normal. But you may also find a number of things that aren't. In general, valves fail through either thermal or mechanical fatigue. Here are some examples of each. Stem wear, like this, can be caused by insufficient clearance between the stem and guide. This results in poor lubrication, which leads to scuffing, pickup, and stem deposits, all of which can keep the valves from seating properly. Poor seating, in turn, takes a toll on valves. An off-square seat will place excessive strain on the valve stem by flexing it each time the valve closes. This leads to a fatigue failure. Obviously, this quick overview hasn't covered all the causes of valve failure, and most valves will show some combination of effects due to normal wear and tear. But the point is that spending a little time looking at the valves can give you important clues to the overall engine condition. That's knowledge that can make your services more valuable to your customers and keep them coming back. In addition to checking your customer's engine for obvious defects, you'll want to check for worn guides. This is probably the single most common cause of valve problems. As you can see here, the force applied by a cam or rocker arm isn't really directed straight through the valve stem, but tends to push it off to the side. Eventually, this off-center force will cause the guides to wear into an hourglass shape with excessive clearance at the top and bottom. This is called bell mouthing and it can lead to erratic seating and excessive flexing of the stem. If you don't repair or replace bad guides, nothing else you do in the valve area is going to make much difference. Without a properly installed guide with the right clearances, you can't cut a good seat. And if by some accident the seat does come out right, the valve will never fit properly because a worn guide won't let it seat correctly. New way cutters are designed to produce a three-angle seat that looks like this. These valve seats provide the best combination of seating efficiency, gas flow, and heat transfer. Three-angle valve seats give maximum durability and optimum performance by ensuring uniform seat width and proper seat location on the valve face. You'll notice that the valve face is cut at a different angle than the valve seat. 
Normally, the difference or interference angle is one degree. This is done for two reasons. First, it provides a positive seal at initial startup. Second, it accommodates expansion so you get full contact and optimum heat transfer when the valve and seat are at operating temperature. The exact angles vary with different manufacturers, so it is important to check the specifications for the engine you're working on and select the correct new way cutters. In this example, the bottom narrowing angle is 60 degrees, the seat is 46 degrees, and the top narrowing angle is 31 degrees. The valve face would be cut at 45 degrees to provide a one degree interference angle. Or, if you have a 30 degree intake valve, as shown in this engine, the bottom narrowing angle is 60 degrees, the seat is 31 degrees, and the top narrowing angle is 15 degrees. By the way, cutting valves and seats with tungsten carbide produces better results than grinding. New way cut seats and valves are flatter, and the texture left on both surfaces promotes more efficient seating. Cutters are more cost efficient and last longer than grinding equipment. They are simple to operate and quickly cut a concentric seat. New way cutters promote a safe, clean working environment by eliminating flying abrasives, disintegrating stones, and messy coolants. Now, let's begin the reconditioning process. The first step after thoroughly cleaning the engine is to measure guide diameter. We're using an expanding ball gauge and micrometer. A quick look at the manufacturer's specifications will tell you whether or not the guides have to be repaired or replaced. Next, you must select the proper pilot. New Way manufactures over 200 sizes of solid tapered pilots and expandable pilots. You'll notice that we prefer using solid tapered pilots. There's a good reason for this. Solid tapered pilots locate on the least worn section of a guide. Naturally, you're going to get more accuracy with a solid pilot. Slide the pilot into the guide until it's snug. Then give it a quarter turn while pressing down. This locks the pilot in position. The pilot's shoulder should be between 1 8 and 5 8 of an inch above the guide. Here's another tip. Don't apply side pressure to the pilot while you're reconditioning the seat. As you can see, it's not too hard to flex a pilot. If you do, your seat won't be concentric with the guide, and your customer won't be happy with the result. Now you're ready to start cutting the seat. A properly cut seat is the correct width properly located on the valve face and concentric with a guide to within two thousandths total indicator reading or TIR. Before you start cutting, you may have to adjust the carbide cutting blades in your new way cutter to span the width of the seat being cut. Loosen the lock screws that hold the wedges in place so you can slide the carbide in or out. This changes the diameter of the cut. That's all, just the diameter. The angles are all precision built into the cutter, so you don't have to worry about them. It doesn't matter if all the carbide blades stick out the same distance, as long as they all span the angle being cut without touching any other part of the combustion chamber. Again, that's because the angles don't change as you move the carbide. When you adjust the blades, be sure to have full wedge contact. Less contact could result in damage to your cutter body. While we're looking at the cutter, you should note a couple of other things. First, keep it clean. Brush chips and dust off after each use. Your carbide blades will last longer and your seats will have a better finish. Never operate a cutter with missing, broken, or chipped blades. Check your cutter to be certain that it has not been dropped or misused. New Way stocks a full line of carbide blades and replacement parts for your valve seat cutters and we can provide overnight service. Most shops keep a new way repair kit containing spare blades, wedges, and lock screws on hand, so they won't be tempted to use a tool that needs repair. Now let's see how easy it is to cut a valve seat. First, slide the cutter down the pilot until it touches the seat. You'll make the 60-degree bottom narrowing cut first. 
Rotate the cutter clockwise by hand to make certain it doesn't hit any part of the combustion chamber. If it rotates freely, you're ready to put the T-wrench in place and start cutting. For increased durability, we have added a steel insert to the T-wrench. Use two hands and apply pressure gradually as you turn the cutter. Ease the pressure on and ease it off. Try not to stop turning the cutter at the same place each time. Do not lift the cutter between turns. Keep cutting until the contact area is clean and smooth all the way around. Next, do the top narrowing cut, in this case using a 31 degree cutter. Depending on how badly worn the old seat was, you may notice that both narrowing cuts remove more material from one side of the seat than the other. This is normal. What's happening is that the seat is actually being moved so it becomes concentric with the valve guide. You can do that by accident too, which is why you have to be careful about placing side pressure on the pilot. The trick is to feed the cutter straight down the pilot and let it do the work. We can't show it to you here, but you'll be able to feel the cutter bite when it begins to cut. You'll easily develop the technique of cutting precision seats with new way cutters. When the top and bottom narrowing cuts are finished, it's time to cut the seat. Same procedure as before, but with a 46 degree seat cutter. You'll get the best results if you let the cutter dwell for a couple of revolutions with only light pressure before you finally remove it from the seat. Of course, if you're going to be doing a lot of valve seat reconditioning, you'll probably want to use a new way power unit rather than turning the cutter by hand. Overall, power units increase both the accuracy and the productivity of seat cutting operations. There are two types of power units, the fixed speed, model 1700, and the variable speed, model 1800. The economical model 1700 is recommended for power equipment engines because its 30 RPM speed is ideal for today's harder seats. Using the power unit is just like using the T-wrench, but the power unit does the work for you with continuous cutting action. Put the cutter in place and check for clearance just like you did manually. Now, turn it on, grab the two handles on the power unit transmission that's the shiny chrome part, pull the transmission socket down over the hex on the cutter and you're in business. Notice how smooth and clean the cut surface is. There's no grinding dust to contaminate the job and cause problems later on. That's another advantage of cutting seats rather than grinding them. When you're done, visually check the seat for uniform width and then measure it just to be sure it's within the manufacturer's specifications. If it's okay, take out the pilot, clean it, and put it away. Now you're ready to check the seal and location on the valve face. You're going to use the valve that will be installed in that position for this check. But before you do, it has to be refaced to return it to the original manufacturer's specs. New Way makes a power valve refacer, the VFR 1000, and a manual valve refacer, Due to the popularity of the manual valve refacer among power equipment technicians, we have added an informative explanation in the next section of this videotape. As you can see on this valve, carbide machine valve faces have the same advantages as new way cut valve seats, and they work exceptionally well together. Insert the refaced valve in the guide and gently tap it on the seat. The key word is gently, as very little force is required. We prefer tapping the valve on the seat or using Prussian blue to check seat location and seal. Take the valve out and look at the face. What you'll find is a very thin line highlighted here where the top edge of the seat contacted the valve face. The line should be unbroken and about one third of the way in toward the center from the valve margin. If location and seal are correct, you're all done with that seat. If they aren't, you'll have to make one or more cuts to move the seat contact area where it belongs. As you can see from this diagram, if the contact area is too near the center, use the seat angle cutter to move the seating surface toward the valve margin. When the contact point is properly located, the seat may be too wide. 
You must then use the bottom narrowing cutter to establish proper width. Do it very carefully and check the results often. Take care not to remove too much material and wind up with a useless seat that has to be replaced. On the other hand, if the contact area is too near the valve margin, you'll have to use the top narrowing cutter to adjust the contact location on the valve face. Both seat location and seat width must be within manufacturer's specifications. Check it with the valve again when you're finished, just to be certain. One last point. That thin contact ring on the valve face is the result of the interference angle that you have built into the valve seat. When the engine comes up to temperature, you'll get full width contact. If you pay attention to the details, work carefully, and use the right tools for the job, there's no reason you can't have a piece of this profitable and growing market. We are at the dawn of an exciting new age in engine technology. Four and even five valve per cylinder engines are common today. Revolutionary new valve and seat materials are on the horizon. By keeping in constant contact with manufacturers, New Way is able to develop the right tools for your job when you need them. To remain at the front of these new technologies, we have developed cutters for seats as small as one half inch or larger than six inches and produce over 15 different types of innovative carbide blades to meet your needs. Whether your customer brings you an ancient cast iron workhorse, the latest overhead valve engine, or even one of these powerful Formula Ones, you will be ready to do the kind of precision job you can be proud of, the kind that brings back satisfied customers. Together, our staff has more than a century's worth of engine reconditioning experience to answer your questions and help solve your problems. We'd like to help you. Call us at 800-248-3889. Reconditioning the valve seat is only half of the job. All the good work that you've just done getting the valve seat right will be wasted if you aren't just as careful about reconditioning the valve properly. While the cylinder head reconditioning business continues to change, one thing has remained constant. Valve reconditioning is profitable work. And valve reconditioning can also play an important role in determining whether a cylinder head stays in the shop for repair or is replaced altogether. Why? Because valves have become much more expensive in the last few years, and there are many more cylinder heads with four valves per cylinder in use today. So repairing a cylinder head by installing all new valves will greatly increase the customer's cost and may incline the customer towards purchasing a new cylinder head rather than servicing the existing head. Reconditioning valves also enables you to turn your work around faster. There's no waiting around for that odd-sized valve to come in when you can recondition the existing valves. New Way Manufacturing has taken its unique method of machining with tungsten carbide and applied it to valve reconditioning. New Way offers an easy-to-use, hand-operated valve refacer, the Gizmatic, as well as the VFR-1000 motorized valve refacer. Each of these offers distinct advantages. To view only the segment describing the features and benefits of New Way's Gizmatic valve refacer, please fast-forward the tape 16 minutes ahead from this point. Let's begin by discussing the critical points of valve reconditioning. When we recondition a valve, we are essentially doing two things. We are correcting any misalignment that may exist between the stem of the valve and the face of the valve, 
and we are resurfacing the valve face in such a way that we will have a flat surface at the desired angle with a surface finish conducive to positive sealing and heat transfer. Remember that when we cut the valve seat, we brought it into concentric alignment with the valve guide. Now we are doing the same thing with the valve, bringing the face into concentric alignment with the stem. Before we take the time to recondition a valve, we need to make sure that the valve is worth reconditioning. After the valve has been cleaned, take a look at the stem and check for any galling, scuffing, or unusual wear. Check the keeper grooves and the tip of the valve for any problems and inspect the valve head and fillet. The majority of valve ailments can be detected by a simple visual inspection. Now measure the valve stem with a micrometer to check for wear. Mic the stem at the top, middle, and bottom. And remember that many valves are tapered at the top to allow for expansion. If the stem is worn beyond the manufacturer's tolerance or damaged, there's no point in reconditioning the valve. We also need to make sure that the valve has not been bent. New Way offers a valve concentricity gauge to accurately check the runout between the valve stem and the valve face. Now let's take a look at the VFR 1000 motorized valve refacer. At first glance, we can see that this machine is noticeably smaller than a traditional valve grinder. The machine is only as big as it needs to be. Since there's no large spinning stone to stabilize, there's no need for the machine to have a large heavy casting. And since there's very little heat generated when machining a valve, there's no need for coolant and the mess that it creates. That's another advantage of the VFR 1000, its cleanliness. Imagine having nothing more than a few chips to clean up. That's why the VFR 1000 has become a favorite of racers. They appreciate a small, clean machine that goes easily onto the trailer and off to the track. Yet the VFR 1000 is just as accurate as a much more expensive valve grinder, and it has nearly the same work range. The VFR 1000 can reface valves with head diameters from as small as a half inch out to two and a half inches, and stem diameters from 3.8 millimeters to a half inch. Now let's take a look at some of the operating features. The unique feature of the VFR 1000 is that it machines valves with a carbide insert rather than grinding them with a stone. There are several advantages to this. First, in terms of the quality of the surface, the VFR 1000 will obtain a surface texture that is superior to most ground valve surface finishes. Cutting with carbide machines the material off in a concentric pattern and machine surfaces are excellent for sealing and heat transfer. Ground surfaces are also very good for sealing and heat transfer, but keep in mind that the surface of a stone is constantly changing as it works. The quality of a ground surface will only be as good as the quality of the surface of the stone that was used to grind that surface. That means the stone must constantly be redressed in order to maintain the work quality. Tungsten carbide does not change shape as it works, so the quality of the work is never at the mercy of the condition of the stone. The cutting tool is controlled by two different hand wheels. One hand wheel determines the depth of the cut, while the other controls the speed of the tool across the valve face. The spindle speed is controlled here. At 100%, the spindle is turning at about 1300 RPM. The valve is held by a collapsible double-cut collet. Notice that the collet collapses over its entire length, so there's more bearing surface holding the valve on center than there is with the chucking systems found on most conventional valve grinders. The cutting angle adjusts quickly and easily to the 45 degree and 30 degree positive stops. The VFR 1000 comes with an abrasive disc which is used to resurface the tip of the valve. Now let's reface a valve. First of all, we'll need to make sure that the machine is set to cut the valve face at the desired angle. The entire tool slide assembly adjusts freely by simply loosening the two lock collars. Turn the tool slide assembly so that the angle leaf set sits flush against the stop for the desired angle, 
either 45 degrees or 30 degrees, and secure it in place by turning the two lock collars clockwise. The positive stops are set to 45 degrees and 30 degrees at the factory. But let's say you want to cut a valve at 44 degrees and 30 minutes. No problem. At the radius where the stops are located, one degree equals 49 thousandths of an inch. So to decrease the angle one half a degree from 45, we simply insert a 24 thousandths shim between the stop and the angle set leaf. A feeler gauge works just fine. Once the angle is set, we need to select the proper collet for the valve that we are refacing. New Way offers collets to cut valves with stem diameters from 4 millimeters to 1 half inch. Each collet can collapse down approximately 1 half of a millimeter or 20 thousandths of an inch below its stated size. Select the smallest collet that the valve stem will fit into without being forced. Also, make sure that you're not over collapsing the collet by using a collet that is too large for the valve stem. To remove a collet from the collet lock nut, simply apply side pressure. Collets may be snapped into place by setting the collet on a flat surface, wide end facing up, and then placing the collet lock nut over the collet and pressing straight down on the lock nut with the palm of your hand. Now we simply screw the collet lock nut back onto the spindle. Just a few turns for now. We're not ready to insert the valve stem just yet. First we need to select the appropriate carbide insert for the valve that we're cutting. New Way offers three distinct types of carbide blades. The VFR72 blade and the VFR75 blade are both general purpose inserts. The VFR72 has a smaller radius and is most effective on medium to soft valves while the VFR-75 has a larger radius and works best on harder valves, including Stellite. The VFR-74 blade is designed for use on titanium and stainless steel valves. Each insert has three cutting tips, and with proper care, you can expect a reface from 30 to 50 valves per tip, or about 100 to 150 valves per blade. Once the proper blade is secured into the tool holder, we're ready to position the valve stem into the collet. We want the collet to collapse onto the valve stem over the same surface where the valve stem would contact the valve guide when assembled. If we're going to be refacing several valves of the same length, it may be worthwhile to adjust the valve stop to the proper position. Using the stop will enable us to get the valve into position faster. The valve stop is a metal rod that resides in the center of the spindle. Adjust the valve stop into position by using the valve stem to push it toward the left or your finger to push it to the right until the stop has been adjusted to the correct position. Secure the valve in place by turning the collet lock nut clockwise. You'll need to hold the spindle with your left hand to keep it from turning as you're tightening the lock nut. Next, the steady rest is secured into position. The spring-loaded steady rest provides support to the cutting action and also minimizes chatter. The steady rest is most effective when it's positioned to contact the valve in the area of the fit radius. The safety shield is moved into position and the machine is ready to reface the valve. Turn the machine on and set the speed control at 30%. We'll talk more about speed later in the tape. First off, we will need to locate the valve face with the cutting 